these initial conditions in the history of both planets look so similar that it seems reasonable to expect that this could eventually lead to life. Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter was sent to look for conditions fit for life on the rocky red planet, Mars. This satellite has been active for over 17 years now and is one of the longest lived spacecraft to orbit Mars in history. The data it has sent back to Earth has continued to shock scientists and this newest discovery is no different. Signs of a once flowing waterfall so big it dwarfs anything we have seen on Earth. Perhaps these are the signs we have been looking for this whole time. Signs that would allow humanity to colonize Mars with up to one million people in the near future. So how did the MRO discover this massive waterfall on Mars? Could this discovery help us confirm if aliens once existed on Mars or are still lurking there? And most importantly, how does this discovery affect the proposed new civilization on Mars? Join us as we explore how NASA found the largest waterfall in the entire solar system. Although NASA has embarked on several space exploration programs in the past decades, one that stands out is its Mars Exploration Program. Established in 1993 after the failed Mars Observer mission of September 1992, MEP seeks to explore the possibilities of life on Mars and the planet's climate and natural resources. MEP has been pursuing this long-term goal by using orbital spacecraft, landers, and Mars rovers built by different U.S. contractors to visit Mars. As expected, the program has been very costly to run, gulping billions of dollars over the years. For instance, NASA's Curiosity rover, which landed on Mars in August 2012, has a budget exceeding $2.5 billion. Despite the high cost, research, and time required to run MEP, the space agency continues to run the program because the possible gains have been a motivating force. Managed by NASA's Science Mission Directorate, MEP's four broad goals are to determine if life ever arose on Mars, characterize Mars's climate, characterize Mars's geology, and prepare for the human exploration of Mars. To better achieve these goals, NASA created a new program under MEP called the Mars Scout Program in the early 2000s to achieve these goals better. The Mars Scout program is a genius initiative because it has succeeded in sending a series of small, low-cost missions to Mars. Under the Mars Scout program, the spacecraft Phoenix was developed and sent to Mars in 2008 as its first mission. Its second mission was the Mars Atmosphere and Volatile Evolution mission, MAVEN, which cost $475 million, and this has been followed by other spacecraft sent to the planet. Now, this begs the question, why is NASA much concerned about Mars? What's so special about Mars that NASA is willing to spend billions of dollars on its exploration? The answer to these questions lies in learning a bit about Mars. Formed 4.5 billion years ago, Mars is the fourth and furthest terrestrial planet from the Sun. It has been dubbed the Red Planet because of the red color on its surface due to the finely grained iron oxide dust in the soil. It is often called the Earth's twin because it is the planet with the best possibility of life. While the Earth has the Moon, Mars has two irregularly shaped natural satellites, Phobos and Deimos. American astronomer Asaf Hall had earlier discovered the two satellites in August 1877. Hall named the two Mars moons after Greek mythological twin characters Phobos and Deimos, who had accompanied their father, Ares, god of war, into battle. It would amuse you that the Romans also referred to Ares as Mars. Mars is divided into two hemispheres, the northern and southern hemispheres, but unlike what we have on Earth, there is a sharp contrast between the hemispheres creating what we know as the Martian dichotomy. Geographically, the two hemispheres differ in elevation by one to three kilometers. In the northern hemisphere, you will find flat lowlands, which make up one-third of Mars' surface. In contrast, the southern hemisphere accounts for two-thirds of the Martian surface and is filled with highlands. With a mean radius of 3,389.5 kilometers, Mars is the second smallest planet in the solar system and has a surface gravity of 3.72 meters per second square, which is 38% of the Earth's. Geologically, Mars has been quite active over the years. It has experienced a fair share of Marsquakes, which can be likened to earthquakes. 
From time to time, dust devils sweep the landscape of Mars, which is home to the highest mountain, Olympus Mons, in the solar system. Also known as Mount Olympus, this mountain is a large shield volcano with a height of 21.9 kilometers and is one of the largest volcanoes on the planet. Someone should tell Mount Everest that it has a big brother on Mars because Mount Olympus is about two and a half times Everest's height above sea level. Surprisingly, Mount Olympus is the youngest of the volcanoes on Mars, formed during the planet's Hesperian period. Through orbital images, scientists have found out that Mars hosts one of the largest canyons in the solar system called Valles Marineris. Valles Marineris is a system of canyons that runs along the Martian surface east of the Tharsis region and is more than 4,000 kilometers long. Its other dimensions are also large, with a width of 200 kilometers and a depth of 7 kilometers. Due to its high contrast albedo features, Mars is a favorite target of those who view the solar system using a telescope. This is not surprising because it is one of the brightest objects in Earth's sky. The widely accepted theory is that Mars was created during the solar system's formation and is a byproduct of a random process of runaway accretion of material from the protoplanetary disk that orbited the Sun. From the uncrewed spacecraft and rovers, scientists have gathered evidence suggesting a large impact basin in the northern hemisphere of Mars. The basin spans 10,600 kilometers by 8,500 kilometers, roughly four times the size of the Moon's South Pole, Aitken Basin, the largest yet discovered basin. Based on this theory, scientists believe Mars was struck by a Pluto-sized body about 4 billion years ago. Also, the event that scientists believe caused the Martian hemispheric dichotomy created the Borealis Basin, which covers 40% of the planet. Mars's position in the solar system means that it gets to have distinctive chemical features. Compared to the Earth, you can easily find elements of low boiling points, such as sulfur, chlorine, and phosphorus. In terms of size, Mars is approximately half the diameter of the Earth and is less dense than its big brother. It has about 15% of Earth's volume and 11% of Earth's mass. This explains why it only has about 38% of the Earth's surface gravity. Despite its reddish-orange surface, Mars can sometimes look like butterscotch. You can also find surface colors, such as golden, brown, tan, and greenish, in different regions of Mars. The colors you see depend on the predominant minerals in those areas. The internal structure of Mars has been a subject of interest for scientists for many years, and it is a dense metallic core that is overlaid with less dense materials. Surrounding Mars' core is a silicate mantle that forms many of the tectonic and volcanic features you see on the planet. The average thickness of the planet's crust is about 50 kilometers, with a maximum thickness of 125 kilometers. Thanks to the Phoenix lander sent by NASA to the planet in 2008, scientists found out that the terrestrial planet has slightly alkaline soil. The Martian soil is composed of elements such as chlorine, sodium, magnesium, and potassium, which are essential nutrients for plant growth back on Earth. The atmosphere of Mars is 96% carbon dioxide, 1.93% argon, and 1.89% nitrogen, alongside traces of oxygen and water. Mars's average distance from the Sun is about 230 million kilometers, and its orbital period is 687 days. The solar day on Mars is just slightly longer than that of the Earth at 24 hours, 39 minutes, and 35.244 seconds. So, we can say that one Martian year is equal to one year, 320 days, and 18.2 hours. These and many other features are why privately held companies such as Elon Musk's SpaceX want to send humans to Mars. The end goal is to settle on the planet, reduce the number of people living on Earth, and see what it feels like to reside on another planet. Luckily, for those who plan to move to Mars, they would live on the planet with the largest waterfall in the solar system. This news will shock many people because water in its liquid form cannot exist on the planet due to its low atmospheric pressure. The only place you can find water in liquid form on Mars is at the lowest of elevations, and this is only for a short period. Unlike Earth, which is filled with oceans, seas, and rivers, Mars only has two polar ice caps that are composed mainly of water. So. Where did scientists see this largest waterfall? NASA made the uncommon discovery through one of its spacecraft, the Mars Reconnaissance Orbiter, MRO. The orbiter had been designed to search for the existence of water on Mars. 
Its mission objectives also included observing the climate of Mars, investigating the geological forces present, and conducting reconnaissance for future landing sites. Construction of the spacecraft began in 2001, and Lockheed Martin handled it on behalf of NASA for four years. MRO was launched on the 25th of August, 2005, and arrived on Mars on the 10th of March, 2006. After six months of aerobraking, MRO entered its final science orbit and began its primary science phase in November 2006. Over the years, MRO has succeeded in relaying over 445 terabits of data from its surface mission back to the Earth. Having made over 60,000 orbits, MRO sent back more data than all other Mars missions combined. Using its three cameras, MRO sees horizon to horizon of every orbit, so it builds up a map of the entire planet every day so scientists can see a global weather map of the planet. The context camera, the second MRO camera, provided high resolution and covered about 99% of the surface. Through its high-resolution cameras, NASA has uncovered unknown facts about Mars ranging from polar avalanches and shifting dunes to the seasonal flow of sand. Sometime in 2017, MRO stumbled on something strange while gazing through the Eridania Basin, which is one of the ancient lakes of Mars. The huge basin is about 1.1 million square kilometers in surface area and can be found at the source of Ma'adim Vallis outflow. The lake dried out during the late Noachian period, dividing into smaller lakes. It was formed about 3.8 billion years ago and held 10 times more water than some of the Great Lakes and three times more than the Caspian Sea on Earth. The high-resolution camera of MRO picked up the image of a massive four-kilometer thick deposit inside the Eridania Basin. Scientists observing this data discovered that the deposit is formed from minerals such as saponite, talc saponite, and iron-rich mica, often found in deep-sea hydrothermal environments. Since their curiosity had been piqued, NASA decided to investigate further, leading them to revisit Mars's history. Like the Earth, Mars had an active environment, and the Eridania Lake was no exception. The basin, which was formed about the same time as life began on Earth, had hydrothermal vents which often support life. This is evidence that at one point in time, Mars could support the existence of living organisms. About 3.7 billion years ago, an event occurred that drastically changed the possibility of life on Mars forever. It began with a climate change, as the planet grew colder, and this had a ripple effect on the water resources there. The liquid water on the planet's surface seeped underground and froze, while some froze on the surface and some were transferred to the poles, forming the big ice caps we see on the planet. As the temperature of Mars changed, the planet became more volcanically active, resulting in catastrophic flooding. If there had been any living organisms on Mars, they couldn't have survived such a disaster. The flooding caused water to rage down from the southern highlands until it reached Ecus Chasma and flowed down cliffs four kilometers high to the valley floor. This was the creation of the largest waterfall in the solar system. Ecus Chasma is a 100 kilometer long and 10 kilometer wide waterfall. A chasma is a large but narrow area of land on another planet that dips below the surface around it, forming steep sides. Ecus Chasma is nothing like we have seen in our world. When the flood stopped, the water went along with it, leading to the demise of the waterfall. The only trace of its existence is edged into the planet's surface. It can be found in the Lunae Planum High Plateau, north of the Valles Marineris Canyon system of Mars. From the images provided by MRO, scientists also detected clay within its valleys, which resembled drainage networks back on Earth. This is proof that water once sat there for a long time. If the water were still there today, Ecus Chasma would have been a great sight to behold. You could bet that the impressive structure would have been one of the tourist sites on the planet and a major heritage site in the solar system. Although Ecus Chasma no longer exists, it is far larger than the largest waterfall on Earth, the Denmark Strait Cataract. Denmark Strait Cataract is an undersea waterfall located on the western side of the Denmark Strait in the Atlantic Ocean. It can be found in the area of the Arctic Circle between Iceland and Greenland. Its height of 3,505 meters is the highest underwater waterfall on Earth. Unlike Ecus Chasma, Denmark Strait Cataract is formed by the density difference of the water masses on either side of the waterfall. This is why the eastern side is colder than the western. Also, the waterfall has a flow rate exceeding 5.0 million cubic meters per second, 
which is about 350 times the size of the extinct Guaira Falls on the border of Brazil and Paraguay. Guaira Falls was once believed to be the most voluminous waterfall on Earth. Although Ica's Chasma is not around to speak for itself, there is no doubt that it has a greater flow rate than Denmark's Strait Cataract. Who would have imagined that this spectacular geological feature could be found on the second smallest planet in the world? This tells us that there is still more to uncover about Mars, and it's only a matter of time before NASA and its scientists bring another mind-blowing discovery our way. And who knows, NASA might stumble on a larger waterfall than Ekas Chasma on another planet. We will keep our fingers crossed till then. Thanks for following this video till the end. For more exciting videos about the solar system, click on the next video on the screen.